There's not a person on the planet with a greater passion for bringing an end to retinal diseases, nor is there anyone who has done so much in support of that effort. Please give a huge FFB welcome and a Hollywood welcome for Gordon Gunn. Great to see you, Gordon. You are Hollywood. Well, thank you. That's right there. Thank you. <laughs> That's great. That's great. Thank you. Thank you. Well, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you. And uh, thank you, Mark. Uh, I wore, wore my Hollywood outfit just because I heard you were going to say. Also, I should tell you, Ed Golub is a great friend of mine. I love the guy. But don't listen to him anymore. When he says when, not if, I'm telling you, it's now. It's now. Yeah. Now. OK. All right, good evening, everybody. I'm, I'm really glad to be here with all of you. And uh, I hope you've enjoyed this conference as much as I have. It's been filled with a lot of great new development information, which is tremendous, and some great speakers, and a lot of chance to meet and talk to everybody. And I'm also really glad to be here in the city of Baltimore. This wonderful city is where Luli and I came. Many of you know this. But back in 1971, in the fall of 71, to join with other families to start the Foundation Fighting Blindness. And I am thrilled to say that a few of those original founders are also here with us tonight, along with Luli. Bev Berman is here. And uh, Be Bev, Bev is here with her daughter, Mindy Kaplan, and David Kaplan, and their sons, Mitchell and Jason. We're really glad to have you guys here. And, uh, and, uh, also, and it was Mindy who, uh, along with her sister, Joanna, Joanne, were uh, diagnosed back in the early part of 1971 with retinitis pigmentosa. And that's why Ben and Beverly uh, became so involved in starting the Foundation Fighting Blindness. Uh, and now, Mindy is, uh, is not only a national trustee, she's also president of the Baltimore chapter so uh, she's following very much in her parents' full footsteps. Mindy, thank you. And also, we're fortunate to have Shoshana Carden. She and her late husband, Jerry, were instrumental in founding the foundation uh, and, and in, in helping get the fundraising going, get the public awareness going, and the human service aspect of the foundation, too. It's wonderful to have Shoshana here. We, we hope to have later, if not now, Harriet and David Finkelstein uh, join us as well. And they were both, have been tremendous members of the founding group and, and uh, continue to be very supportive of the foundation. So please join me in thanking Luli, Beverly, Shoshana, and the Finkelsteins when they come. So. It's hard, it's really hard to believe that it's been 42 years since we started it. I mean, the time has flown. And that's maybe because we've worked hard, really hard every day over those years, and because we've accomplished so much. And, uh, and we would not have made the progress we've made, nor have the very, very extraordinary potential and promise we have in front of us, if it wasn't for three groups that have all worked together as a team all the way through. And it starts with our, with our researchers and, of course, our scientific advisory board, which started back in 1972 under Alan Lady's leadership. And now, after 30 years at the helm, he turned it over to Eric Pearson. Eric's doing a fabulous job as the chairman as well. We have a world-class group, and we've had it ever since we've started. And because of them, we funded the best research available. We brought in the best people possible to be in this field. And, and we continue to fund a tremendous number of researchers right now that all are approved and, and, uh, and put in front of us by the, our scientific advisory board. A number of those researchers and a number of the members of the scientific advisory board are here tonight. And, uh, and they, many, many of them you heard speak uh, along the way during this conference. 
Uh, I'd like to ask them all, we're going to do a little Jim Gymkhana here, I'd like to ask them all to stand up, please, all the researchers and members of the SAB. All right. These are, these are hugely dedicated people, and so is the next group, and that's our, that's our leader, our volunteer leadership. And we've got a lot of the officers here. You heard Ed Golub's name, Jerry Shaw's here, Joel Davis, a number of the other officers, Yvonne Chester, and then members of the board of directors, our national trustees, and our chapter leaders are all here. And you guys are what make it really work. You're the drive and the passion behind it all. So would all of you that are leaders uh, both in the field and, and nationally, please stand up and let us recognize you. And you know, you know, uh, when we started, it was just a handful of people. We didn't need a staff. Uh, now, as you can tell, we've grown and evolved. And uh, all these groups have evolved and changed, and we've added people. Well, we've also added a, a professional staff under Bill Schmidt's leadership uh, and a tremendous group of senior leaders and, and a, a great professional staff. They are not only responsible for putting on this weekend and this event, but all year long. They work day in and day out to support the research and the, and the volunteer leadership. So would the staff please stand? Are the staff. It's a great group. And now, because we've got most everybody else standing up, we're getting you warmed up for the dancing. Uh, I, there, are, there are a number of people who are here for their very first conference, very first vision conference. And I, I think it's, you're the, you're the lifeblood of the future, too. So would all of you who have not been, this, for whom this is your very first conference, would you please stand up? And let us thank you. Now, now as, as you can imagine, I'm very proud of the progress we've made. But tonight, what I'd like to do is talk about the future. And that's because uh, we're no longer just doing as we did and when we started 42 years ago, just searching for a cure. Now, with the number of clinical trials we have going on, and one that is restoring sight to people who were blind, we are, we are really making the impossible possible now. It's a tremendous time in our history and a wonderful, it bodes very well for the future. I, I would liken it, compare it to what it's like, uh, it, what it's like for sort of mainstream technology. Take smartphones, for example, and probably most all of you have them and, and uh, most all of you probably have trouble putting them down. I hope you put them down for now. <laughs> Uh, but we can, you know, we can make our appointment schedules, we can, um, we can learn languages, we can text each other, we can do uh, a lot about, about finding places, and, and we can also, once in a while, talk to other people on the phone. The, the wonderful thing is we can instantaneously be in touch with people we want to all over the world. And now there's a voice component, really, a voice capability for those of us who are blind, that is making a huge difference. In fact, my wife, Luli, said, why don't you just let Siri give your speech tonight? <laughs> and you can sit back and enjoy it. <laughs> Not a bad idea. But it, when, when you think about it, uh, I mean, there's also Google. And Google has long been, not long, but for the last few years, uh, has been known as a verb for what we, how you can access a wealth of information and take that information uh, and do a lot of different things with it. You can get it quickly, easily, and just at your fingertips. But now Google's also becoming known for other products that it's making, uh, including Google Glass. And it's not ready yet, they're developing it, but when it's market ready, it'll allow you to do everything you can do with a cell phone, 
but you don't have to hold it. You can do what you do on a smartphone and not even have to hold it. And then there's uh, uh, the Google driverless car. Have any of you heard about that? Yeah. All right. Well, that's being developed and, and uh, is being tested now around the country. And I, I'm told, I don't drive anyway, so this may be great. I'm told you just get in it, you sit back, and you tell it where you want to go. And if you're lucky, it gets you there in one piece. You know, and let's hope that happens. But, but the amazing thing is uh, that all of this stuff, just 30 or 40 or I can even say 50 years ago, was all thought to be science, science fiction. It, it was imagined. The things that people imagined in comic books and in movies and in science fiction novels. And why was there such a pop culture that developed around it? Well, I think it's because we all, we all uh, as human beings, believe that the ingenuity of, of humans will, will make happen what we can imagine. Just think about that. It'll make happen what we can imagine. So I think that that's what the Foundation Fighting Blindness is all about, and all of us here in this room are all about. You have to have faith that that can happen, and we have faith in the innovativeness and the ingenuity of our researchers. We have faith in the vision uh, and guidance of our leaders, and we have faith in the plain power of good old-fashioned fundraising. Those are the ingredients that make this foundation what it is and why we are now making the impossible possible. And I think we're really sort of the Google of retinal degenerative disease research. And, and uh, really, I, think about it. Now just think, there are, a lot of, there are a lot of things you heard about this weekend that are happening, that are uh, scientific advances, that, are, that we're all pr very proud of, and we've all had a chance to witness some of them. Uh, let's just take, for example, I'm, I'm thinking about the Argus II that we heard about yesterday evening at the session with Second Sight and others, and talked about this bionic retina that uh, will allow people to see light, to see that, that are blind, or, or nearly blind, like me, or, or blind, uh, from retinitis pigmentosa. They can see light, they can see shadows. I mean, there's that fellow in England, we heard from Kathy yesterday about her experience, but there's a fellow, Keith Heyman, in, in London, or in England, who, who uh, is, was able to see fireworks. He was with his grandchildren and children, and could, for the first time in decades, see fireworks. He can, when he walks around his neighborhood, he can see curbs, he can see doorways, I mean, that's, uh, if that isn't scientific, science fiction becoming reality, then I don't know what is. That's pretty neat. And then you think about our, our continuing clinical trial of gene therapy for Labor's congenital amaurosis, where, uh, in fact, we now have people who are, with one treatment, are able to see that we're blind before they had the treatment and are able to do things, in, the, in many cases, uh, just routine tasks and, and enjoy simple pleasures that fully sighted people take for granted. Like even watch, uh, playing baseball, in that case. Just amazing stuff. And it's really, it was only imagined some years ago. And then you think about the more universal treatments, the treatments that uh, can, can not only uh, take, treat somebody with a specific gene mutation, but they can go across diseases and treat a number of diseases, no matter what the cause. And, and, and in that regard, I'm, I'm thinking, for example, of I mean, we, we have uh, David Gamm, you've heard from earlier today, a renowned scientist that we fund, who happens to be here tonight, who also uh, is, is told us all about how he's coaxing uh, cells from the blood or the, the skin of patients into becoming retinal cells, in, uh, induced pluripotent stem cells, but treating, teaching them or coaxing them to become retinal cells, and he's actually built a virtual retinal tissue in a dish. Now just imagine, as this, this is a great step forward, a, a tremendous beginning step, but, but imagine when, when and if, and I think it's going to happen, that scientists will be able to make retinas that can be customized to individuals, because it starts with their own cells, and can replace dysfunctional retinas. Just imagine that. I mean, this is pretty amazing stuff. So, so, 
So, so there are many of these, and we are, we are making the impossible possible. Think about, and there are many more than, than just those, but now put your mind around, well, what could happen in five years or in 10 years? I mean, think about this, this uh, Argus II, this bionic retina. Think about the third and fourth generation. Will people be able to look into the faces and see the details of the faces that, of the people they love and of their friends? I mean, that, that's possible. That's uh, very exciting. And, and uh, the same thing is true with, the, with the, the retina, the possibilities there. I mean, this is a, a, a amazing stuff we're talking about. The possibilities are endless based on the research that's going on right now and we know will be coming along in the future. And we know how to get there. We know how to take care of them. We know because we've already raised in the first 42 years of our history $550 million. We <laughs> Now, granted, and we also know that over the years, our fundraising has generally kept pace with the pace of research developments. But now, in recent years, the research developments have outstripped our fundraising ability astronomically. And that's, that's what I guess we call the prize, the, 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 uh, the, 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 the opportunities of success. I mean, we had to have success to get there, but now we've got to have a superhuman job all of us in this room going forward and many others, thousands of others around the country. We have now more than 130,000 volunteers and donors, active volunteers and donors around the country. That's pretty incredible. And, and it's gonna be up to all of us to keep the momentum going. We, have, uh, we, we are very fortunate to have a rock solid foundation uh, that has tremendous leadership and, and, uh, and tremendous researchers, I mean, amazing uh, pioneering researchers. And, and what we're doing now is, and, and a great staff, as I said earlier, what we're doing now is trying to add further and further to, to, that, to that great strength that we already have. And I'm happy to say that we recently brought on four members of our board of direct, new members this year, Steve Alpert, Mary Rose Sylvester, Ed Babin, and Jason Ferrara. And, uh, and three, four new members of our, of our uh, national trustees, Mindy Kaplan, uh, the, Bob and, and Jill Morris, uh, and, uh, and, and uh, uh, Alan Spiro. So we've got all of them here tonight. Would they all stand and let us thank them for joining us? And you know, you know the, great, the great thing about this is that they all bring with them uh, a, a lot of their people, a, a generation of people who are supporters of theirs. So that adds to the effort, that adds to everybody in this room. It helps, like all of you, to increase the fundraising for research. And, and, they were, and we're going to be focusing more and more on adding to that, to that effort. So you'll hear more about that, and we look to all of you to help us identify future leaders and keep them coming for the foundation. Uh, I, I, th I just have to say, I, I think it's, uh, it's very exciting as I look forward and see what the future ahead of us that we do have two and three and even maybe four generations of people now behind us and coming along to carry on the research that, that has already been done and to build on it. And it's going to take all of us to do that. It's built on 42 years of history and it'll take all of us to continue to build on that. I'd like to say that in the past we've talked about the fact that the foundation provides hope. And now I think we can say going forward, not only do we provide hope, we provide healthy, healthy eyesight to a lot of people and we're gonna increase the amount of that. Saving and restoring sight and we're doing it now. Thank you.